A little bit of sun bursting through the trees. Creepers! How the heck are you crazy creeps? We are here today, pretty much in the heart of downtown Gresham, and directly behind me here is the East Metro Community Med Media Building, which is the production to a lot of the local community cable access shows that are, you know, produced here and then played over the local airwaves if you have particular channels out here in Portland. And back in the day, cable access, especially in the 90s, was really a thing here in Portland. There was a lot of iconic TV shows that were on there at night. So today we're gonna kinda talk more about that. I'm gonna show you guys um, some pictures that I found online about those um, specific people and the shows that they created. This is the newer uh, studio. The original one was at Mount Hood Community College, which is uh, no longer in production there. But yeah, we're gonna do a little bit of Portland Cable Access remembering and I'm gonna tell you guys three of my favorite shows that were really interesting and uh, you guys may remember them so hopefully you do all right just kind of moving across the street here show you guys on their windows here they have some of the pictures of their cameras and production facilities and like I said in the 90s Portland was huge when it came to people producing their kind of own shows. This was way before YouTube, social media kind of took over and is now today kind of what public access was back then. <laughs> and I'm laughing because a lot of you guys from Portland, if not, might remember a, a specific individual that really did help pave the path for a lot more shows and kind of the eh, maybe flexibility of what they could and couldn't produce and that was Jim Spaggs. The following program contains material which may be objectionable to some viewers that nudity is not dirty and people are too busy and too serious. This show is not for closed-minded conservatives who have masterminded a plan for all people to live by and see no other possibilities other than their own agenda for expression and fun. Pity the show. See what we're showing here. I know, I know. I need one of those phones that can show me what's going on. You know what we got here is we got this book with uh, pictures of, is it just men or is it men and women? Well, this is... Now just stay back here. She can zoom in on you. Isn't what we got is, is a pictures of naked men. Number one on our list for cable access. Probably one of the most known cable access people in Portland. We actually visited his headstone not too long ago um, and paid our respects to Jim. But yeah, he had a show where he was basically nude, did a lot of art, and he was for you know freedom of speech, being able to create and just basically do and say whatever he wanted <laughs> with the community being the ones kind of flipping the bill. Jim took advantage of the programs even to this day that these places will set up for you to be able to, you know, put your show on and production and he also was able to edit it on time or on campus and produce it and actually have live call-ins as well so <laughs> i'm pretty sure if you know if you remember cable access and you remember the name jim spags and you probably remember the show i don't have to get into too much detail but he was also very much for um you know letting people know that nudity wasn't dirty he was for free speech and art so i love jim spags i know he kind of got a bad rap he actually did run for mayor as well he was so loved in portland at one time but he had a call-in show and he was kind of the first that I saw starting to do the live call-in where he would leave his home phone or his um, the studio number and you could call in and talk to him and people would call in and prank him and he was always just really cool to people um, so that's number one if you guys definitely remember cable access you'll definitely remember the name Jim Spaggs um, you could easily YouTube his you know name and find some not only my video that we did where we visited his grave uh, but other folks have, you know, kind of documented that now onto YouTube from the old show. 
But yeah, a lot of the productions for all the shows were right here, well not right here, but they were here in Gresham and the Portland surrounding area. And speaking of live call-in, there was another show that really, kind of maneuver this way. There was another show that really, I remember one of my favorites was a live call-in show by the name of The Chess Show. Yeah, just The Chess Show, kind of simple. And, uh, but it was really fun. You would call in and they had the old school, well, back then it was, wasn't was old school. It was kind of a, just what the computers were. But the chess game on the, you know, the computer, and you would call in and you could move the pieces depicting upon whatever, uh, you know, side it was on, the turn. And the host was really cool. She was really, you know, good at what she did. She was really inviting to the guests. She always had a ton of folks that would like call in and Yes, it's the Chess Show! And we are live! Turn up TV for the next hour! Our studio audience is so happy to hear that. Night into the black square uh, adjacent to the two black pawns. And I want to vote against having uh, algebraic notation. I actually won a couple things from them. I'm not sure if I actually did receive one of the chess show shirts, but in Portland for many years, that was really like if you if you had one of the chess show shirts, you were definitely uh, familiar with cable access in Portland. <laughs> okay. So, um, Jeremy, I see uh, we have all kinds of delightful prizes here tonight on the chess show, as usual. Okay, and what, what delightful items do you think that some of our callers might win? I like this one first. Oh. you see that? No, oh, ah, it's beautiful. We ah, we got the, uh, the old cat with the sack. Over the years, there was a ton more folks that, you know, kind of did their thing with the community media, and that would have been some other kids that started kind of later on um, after the Jim Spaggs era and they were out here um, and I believe most of their production like I said was at the Mount Hood College as well but that was Insanity I believe it was Insanity 97080 which is the area code here and it was basically like three kids that would do a live call in and they had a little puppet named Harvey and Harvey looked like something like maybe like a Cabbage Patch Kid meets a Garbage Pail Kid meet something that you would see like in the sewer like the gutter <laughs> it was this mangled puppet I'll, I'll try and find some pictures of them um, and the kids did a live call-in where they would have harvey in the background and they would just talk with folks <laughs> that's a dirty old man that was <laughs> he's so glad that yeah. bob gave him that prize yeah that was yeah. good but, but that's but right after the wait, wait. So. what's the fun of that though you know, when I, when I get down to business, I like to check things out, you know? <laughs> well, maybe he won't be so worried about going with girls if uh, he can't see his own thing. Maybe, maybe. Maybe he'll think it's bigger than it. Oh, are you speaking from experience? Oh, uh, he's gone. All right. Thanks, thanks for calling. Bye, caller. You know Harvey would answer a lot of the questions, um, but it was comical because it was, you know, it was live. It was right on the spot. They really didn't do... I mean, maybe they did a little bit of production to it, but I don't think much editing went into the live show. Um, and then they did some reels where they would, you know, mute out certain videos and put in live like hip hop music and make the people dance and stuff. They were just really creative. And if I remember correctly, the original show was actually called Madness 97080. And the original people that started it kind of changed over the years and they changed the names and whatnot but yeah i just loved the uh portland cable access growing up i definitely called into a lot of the shows i learned a lot actually um through a lot of the certain shows that i would watch um kind of just doing this now um with their productions and stuff it really i don't know i would just say it kind of paved the path for me not only wanting to be involved with you know videography and making stories and creating things i really wanted my own show and i think if it wasn't for youtube i probably would have done that at one point i actually did look into you know the the cost the production what the hours inquire to rent the equipment and i believe if you put in certain you know hours of time 
you can register to rent the equipment here with the cameras and stuff, being able to, wow, being able to take them, you know, off property and use them later, so. Yeah, three of my favorite shows, Jim Spaggs, The Chess Show, and Insanity. And there's a, there was a few more too, like a handful of really well-known cable access shows. And I'll, like I said, I'll insert some pictures of some of the ones that I remembered, especially Jim Spaggs. <laughs> Happy doodles! Holy moly gargonzoli. And don't forget to video the show. And those were just some of his like wacky sayings. He was a character for sure. And a lot of the people that created the shows actually were really great people. They were interesting. I think the person, the lady that ran the Church of Elvis, she had a show way back. She was like one of the very first Portland people that I remember seeing having a show um, and would actually have punk rock bands like Sweaty Nipples and a couple other well-known punk bands kind of play on her show as well. But there you have it. This is the new facility like I said most of the cable access shows that were filmed that I remember were filmed at the Mount Hood Community College and these guys this facility is brand new and I'm pretty sure they do live production here as well and stuff like that um, but I also think that most of the live call-in shows and stuff were the Portland campus the um, cable company that was providing that service at the time had like three big channels. I think it was 11, 21, and 33 at the time. And uh, yeah, another one was PDX Sports Line. My buddy John Phillips was the host. It was basically a sports radio show live on TV. He kind of took it from the radio to the airwaves and he would invite me and my brother on and have Portland Trailblazers and stuff. And it was so cool. I mean, it was just, like I said, way before YouTube, way before any kind of social media cable access so if you guys want I'll leave links too so you can check out what their facilities are like maybe we can get a tour sometime I did email them and see if we could actually tour this cool oh so this is so neat I was out front kind of piecing together the story and uh, I ran I actually rang the bell and a gentleman by the name of Chris which is awesome because we share a name already uh, was kind enough to let me come in and just kind of take a quick glimpse of the facility I, it's been like you said it's probably been 10 years do you mind if I film you Go ahead. oh cool uh, yeah, it's Start this Neat. Way. Thank so, you so much for your time. For sure. This is the equipment room. Wow. So cool. You poke your head so in. you guys rent so people can volunteer their time and then they can get permission to uh, go. So that, that process anymore okay. is really just taking a rotation. Uh, membership is $100 for a year and then you can take classes, use gear, use the facility. Very cool. And you can volunteer. Very cool. And this is cool uh, in here. You guys got to hook it up, man. This is neat. And we got this. Oh wow, he's actually taking us into a studio. Yeah, so I know. Big studio. Very yeah. cool. Yeah, most of the old productions were at Mount Hood Community College, if I remember correctly. Uh, I'm not quite sure. From like the 90s, that's where like the main. Uh, I believe the main. Like, oh, this is so neat. Look this at this. Studio A control room. Cool. Yep. And then this goes out, I believe, to like where you would film, right? Yep, yep. Oh, okay. cool. Oh wow, you're really giving me a nice tour. Yeah, I appreciate this. That. How neat. Wow. Oh, I thought somebody was sitting there at first. Oh, yeah, yeah. Nice. Look at this, you guys. We're going to have to take this uh, YouTube channel maybe up to another level. You know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Like, look at this. Go. He's got the big green. They got the green screen. We've even got our audience already. <laughs> got a built-in audience. Look at all the cameras and neat. Oh, this is cool. So they can see everything from the control room out. And it's a huge space. You can you basically put your production right here. Right? This is kind of where you would film. Yeah, for green screen. Yeah. That's cool. Yeah. Wow. Wow, that's come such a long way. Yeah. Wow, this is so neat. I'm so happy, too, because like, like I told you guys earlier when we were filming, I'm such a huge fan of self-productions and kind of self-made videos and just all, I mean, it's art, really, and it's evolved so much over the years that it's just unreal. Um, I remember when I was invited, like I said, to the show PDX Sports Line. Uh, oh cool yeah. look at this Music very quiet nice editing so you can yeah. wow my brother would love this he loves to yeah. do his music this is a studio studio b, studio b here smaller one. a little bit smaller yeah it's still really pretty though 
Nice, man. This is neat. Now, this place is very expansive. Oh, yeah. Sure. So, a little bit smaller, but very quaint little yeah. nice area. A lot of people. Put Good lighting. One, yeah. Very cool. Yeah, that's nice having that nice quiet editing. Yeah. <laughs> that's cool. I am so happy to see how far this has come. Like I said, when I was invited with John Phillips and them, the facilities were not. I mean, I wasn't too much into the videography and things like that back then but just going into the facilities now it's gotten so nice so bro thank you so much it's a pleasure to meet you chris there you have it cable access to see our show again tonight i'm glad man i i this is like the second time i've seen it and i am enthused man totally okay well we you know we uh, went all out tonight there should be all kind of interesting things to show you keep in your pants until the show's over okay okay i'll do my best